My name is Jason Vong, and this $1,000 M4 MacBook Air is one of the best entry-level travel computers for photographers and content creators. MacBook Air Guide. In this video, we'll share with you shopping secrets to save money, vital accessories that you'll need to create your art, and setting up your Mac properly so you can maximize your productivity. So whether you're someone who's starting their photography journey or a seasoned photographer who's new to the Mac ecosystem, this video will be a great starter guide for you. Shopping Secrets. Here's an Apple secret you might not know, but you can instantly save $100 by purchasing from Apple's EDU online store. No credentials needed. But a lot of other online retailers like Costco and Amazon will run periodic deals as well. And a great thing about Costco is that they have a generous 90-day return policy. So if the Mac doesn't end up working out for you, you can always return it for a full refund. Is the base model enough? For $1,000 or $900, the 13-inch base model M4 MacBook Air is a phenomenal deal. We're getting a great color accurate display, which is essential for all of our photo and video editing needs. It already comes with 16 gigabytes of memory, which is the absolute recommended minimum to run any photo and video apps. Now, Apple used to charge $1,100 for eight gigabytes of RAM. Eight. So the hype for these M4 generation models are absolutely justified. Aside from that, there are two potential upgrades you might want to consider personally, storage and screen size. Now, 256 gigabyte of storage isn't that much, but I'll show you how to manage our limited storage, including what external hard drives I personally recommend. But if you can afford to, try to get the 512 gigabyte model at the very least, or even I would push you towards the one terabyte model. It is pricier, but at least then you wouldn't have to worry about space. Plus, the moment you offer more storage, they automatically upgrade you from 8 to 10 core GPU, which does boost your photo and video app performances. Aside from that, screen size 13 inch versus 15 inch. Now, I opted for the 13 because I want the lightest possible machine for when I'm traveling. And when I'm back home, I can just connect it to a bigger display. But if this is going to be your sole device with no displays to connect to back at home, 15 inch would be something I would consider. But yes, Michael, the base model is more than good enough. Mac ports. So you get a headphone port here on the right and on the left MagSafe to charge your laptop, but you can also use either of these two Thunderbolt ports here to charge as well via USB-C. Handy if you ever forget the MagSafe cable, because God knows I have. However, try to keep these Thunderbolt ports freed up so we can connect the more important accessories. Vital accessories, SSD. For all of our photo and media files, we're going to be storing them on an external SSD. And I highly recommend getting the Samsung T7 since we'll be editing both photos and videos, and these things are fast and reliable. There is the newer Samsung T9 model, which is actually faster, but if you want to save on some money, the T7 is fine, and I recommend getting at least two terabytes. Now, bigger hard drives like this Lacey Rugged 5 terabyte can work too, but they will run slower and they don't actually take advantage of the Thunderbolt speed but I would still recommend getting one anyway as a backup drive in case we lose our main SSD or God forbid it gets corrupted. That's me knocking on wood. That way, I would still have my most recent and past projects on these bigger drives. Just make sure to do periodic backups. The Vong's dongle. That sounds weird. Now, because we're limited to only two Thunderbolt ports, I highly recommend getting a USB-C hub dongle. This one I have here can read SD and micro SD cards from our cameras, a couple of fat USB-A ports in case we have any ancient technology that still needs to connect this way, and an HDMI port so we can connect to a bigger monitor, like this ASUS ProArt display. ASUS ProArt display. This is a stunning 27-inch 5K resolution HDR monitor which scales natively with Mac OS, which means you get the crispiest of details from surfing the web to watching videos and even editing photos and videos. Oh yeah, that's sharp. While I enjoy the portability of the 13-inch laptop to crank out some work when I'm on the go, I just love coming back home to a big display so it's much easier on my eyes. At 5K, text appears sharper. There are more screen real estate for apps, especially video editing timelines. And in general, multitasking with different windows up is much easier. It connects via HDMI and DisplayPort, but you can also connect your MacBook Air via USB-C to not only get the 5K output, but also keep it charged as well. You also gain three USB-A ports and two USB-C ports, so you can plug in any additional peripherals. Like, I don't know, a printer. Yeah, I have a printer. And we talked about how important it is to have a color accurate monitor because we want our photos and videos to look amazing across people's screens. 
and the PA27JCB, that's the model for this display, will already come pre-calibrated from the factory. So whether you'll be editing an sRGB, Rec709, DCI-P3, or Adobe RGB, this monitor has a variety of color gamut to adapt to your workflow. And if you struggled with glares before, ASUS has its Lux Pixel technology included, which is essentially anti-glare and low reflection coating on the screen, so you can still enjoy the incredible 5K color accurate view, even in bright environments. For more information, check out the link in the description box below, and if you end up purchasing this ASUS Pro Art display or other qualifying ASUS products, you also get a free three-month trial to Adobe Creative Cloud. Thank you, ASUS, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's set this baby up. Managing storage. Once you're finished with the initial setup, first things first. Let's manage our storage because 256 gigabyte each. Go down to your dock and open up system settings. Go to general storage and you'll be able to see what's taking up space. If you're using an iPhone or you've set up a Mac before with the same Apple ID, chances are your photos and messages are already downloaded into this new Mac and it's taken up space. So what we're gonna do is open up photos, head up to photos, settings, and simply uncheck iCloud Photos and choose Remove from Mac. It's not gonna permanently delete your photos. It will still be on your iCloud and your iPhone. It will just be removing from this Mac. Next, messages. Now, these are the photo video attachment that you will receive from friends and family. And this one's a little bit annoying, but what you would do is Command A, which highlights everything and press Delete until the storage shrinks. But you'll need to do this a few times because for whatever reason, it doesn't actually highlight everything. And again, it's not deleting from your iCloud or from your iPhone, it's just removing it from this Mac only. Lastly, we're gonna delete some applications that came pre-installed with our Mac and the choices here is completely up to you. For example, I'm gonna delete GarageBand because I'm a photographer, not a musician. I got plenty of expensive hobbies to deal with already. And I'm also gonna delete iMovie because I personally use a different video editing software. And don't worry, if you ever need them back again, you can always reinstall them from the App Store. It's not gonna be a problem. Formatting your external SSD. Okay, now we're gonna be setting up our main external SSD. Again, this SSD is where we're gonna store all of our media files, project libraries, Lightroom catalogs, etc. Go down to the dock, open up Launchpad, type in and open Disk Utility. Select your external SSD, not the internal one, and choose Erase. Give it a name and make sure the format is APFS. This format ensures the most compatibility and fastest communication between your SSD and your Mac. Then click Erase. Now keep in mind, you won't be able to use this SSD with a Windows computer, Macs only. So if you're planning on switching between different operating systems, then I would choose the XFAT format instead for cross-platform compatibility. Now, hot tip for you, get a case, get one of these adhesive fabric mouse holder, and you can have your SSD hanging on the back of the screen to help keep your MacBook nimble. Finder. When you're browsing files on Finder, I highly recommend going to View and choosing As Column because you can run through the preview of your photos and videos very quickly. If you need to enlarge them, simply press the spacebar button. AirDrop. Now moving on to the thing that every Apple users rave about, AirDrop which you can find here on Finder as well. You can airdrop your edited photos and videos from your Mac to your iPhone quickly and vice versa. Just make sure both devices are unlocked and have Wi-Fi turned on. iPhone mirroring. Now within the last year, there's a new thing called iPhone mirroring, which you can use your iPhone on your Mac without touching it. So you can share photos and videos to your favorite social media platforms without doing the whole airdrop dance. This is handy for apps that are mobile exclusive only. Just make sure the Wi-Fi on your phone is turned on. And let me show you a couple more tricks. Screenshotting and screen recording. Command Shift 3 quickly screenshots all of your screen. Command Shift 4 allows you to manually screenshot something. And Command Shift 5 allows you to choose which app gets screenshotted or gets video recorded. And all of this will get saved to your desktop. This is uh, how we record all of our tutorials here. Photo editing. So let's get into the meat of photo editing. What are people using and how well does it run on the Mac? There are a handful out there, but Adobe Lightroom is probably the most recommended. And no, they're not sponsoring this video, don't worry. It's what I personally use. It is subscription-based, however, at $10 a month, but very worth it in my opinion and for what it can do. For example, in Lightroom, it can quickly recognize humans, animals, and even skies, and can create a mask over them, which makes targeted adjustments way easier. See here, I can brighten up my subject quickly without affecting the background, or change the background color without affecting my subject. 
It also has a built-in denoise feature that can clean up grainy images, and it does it pretty quickly. This used to be a very intensive and machine taxing process. Good thing we have 16 gigabytes of RAM now, am I right? Of course, all the basic adjustments are instantaneous on the M4 MacBook Air. You move a slider, it's very responsive. And you can copy settings from one photo and apply it to hundreds of photos without it breaking a sweat. That's how insane this portable lightweight machine is. A $10 a month subscription includes one terabyte of cloud storage, which will allow you to start or continue the edit on your mobile devices, which I thoroughly enjoy when we're traveling. And it does come bundled with the full version of Photoshop. Now, the great thing is because these two apps here are so universally used, there are a ton of tutorials and presets out there on the internet. So if you don't know how to do something, there will always be videos and articles teaching you how to do it. But if you need general photography help outside of the Mac, like how to get super sharp photos with any cameras, or even how to take better photos in low light, you can check me out, Jason Vong, on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button. Oh yeah. Video editing. If you're a photographer, then you're also a videographer. That's just how the world works, man. I don't know what to tell you. And I know you know what I mean. You gotta be making videos of your photos. You gotta be filming behind the scenes of your photo shoot. You gotta be making marketing sizzle reels for your business. And luckily, the M4 series of Macs are video editing powerhouses as well. There are a lot of apps out there, but I don't wanna overwhelm you, so get CapCut. It is free, but you're gonna wanna subscribe for the Pro for the captioning feature. It's also $10 a month or $90 if you flat out sub for the year. Otherwise, for a more dedicated video editing experience, DaVinci Resolve has a free version that's insanely powerful. And also, there's iMovie that came pre-installed with your Mac. All of these apps have an abundant amount of resources on the internet that you can also learn from. If you found this video immensely helpful, consider a super thanks donation to support the channel. Don't forget to check out ASUS Pro Art, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.